Mr. Ross Davenport, is that you? Charlie, Bel Davenport. Charlie Velasquez with an S. How are we doing? Dav Davenport. Good, man. Long time no see. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. You too. I've just come off a vigorous, vigorous session off the uh, Peloton, as you can see. I'm glistening after a... Yeah, there's steam coming burning out Burning 5,000 calories on the Peloton behind me. Um, I'm surprised we still remember how to do this, Charlie. It's been a while. Well, we don't, so we're going to find out. We're going to find yeah, we, out. We, we never, we've never done it well, so I guess if you, if you don't remember how to do it well, it really doesn't matter. Um, but welcome yeah. to Season 3 of TFRO, Talking Florida Rugby Occasions. Charlie's changing the background, messing with my head. Charlie's wearing... What is that jersey you're wearing, Charlie? I'm wearing my South Tech rugby shirt, which somebody asked Los me Peros. about at FAU the other day. Los Teros, who knocked off the USA in We're doing the good. Sevens We're doing World Cup last weekend and are on the circuit full-time next year. Yeah, man. It's going to be fun. I will also mention you lost to England in the Challenger final. Um, well, but, of course, no. England also lost to Ireland, who were good at 15s, but not... Traditionally, very good. good at sevens. Sevens, but they have They're getting team. a lot better. They knocked us off in the first round of this tournament with a very silly format. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're back. 2022-2023. I know we're on Sundays for now. We'll see how that goes. I said to you, Charlie, we may, we'll see how many viewers we have tonight. It's probably going to be a slow Sunday. But we yes, do have some is. cool guests. Um, we, we were supposed to have a special guest, but there's always Cagney Cobra and his letters down. And I, and I yeah, haven't he, heard if we're going to have that special guest. I want to, I want to tell you he, who it's going to be, but it, it, it wasn't coordinated by Cagney Cobra. I just got a text from him that he failed miserably. So that's confirmed. No special guest. Oh. Unless, unless story, somebody story shows of, up. Story of his life, really. Yes. <laughs> story, story of his life, except for the, except for that, the, the beautiful family he has. Cagney, you know, he works in vegetables. Um, and he uh, plays two minutes of sevens and then asks for a sub, as oh, yeah. we as we famously showed you guys most weeks. Um, hopefully, we sound and look all right. I'm at I'm at a not, I'm at a new I moved house, so I'm hoping the Wi-Fi is okay. It's got it had one bar on here for a minute, but it seems like I have good connection. So hopefully, it's moving pretty smoothly. I think. So yes, we, we've missed a few things, Charlie, since the last episode. <laughs> Well, pretty much all the summer. Had, uh, Let's try to quickly go yes. over what happened uh, in the summer. Listen, we want to first of all, if you'd like to sponsor, if you'd like to sponsor Tifro, please reach out to Charlie or myself. And yes, please. We can accommodate. I was, it got me thinking about that. Was that our our previous sponsor, Chris Ream, is one of those rugby people that hides away the entire Florida summer, probably quite wisely. So there's there's a lot of people that do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just because of the heat, we did have our Florida Seven season. It was sort of a weird season. Um, we we didn't have the only competitive side we had that was going on to nationals was Phoenix. I think they they won a couple of games there. I think Charlie, right? At least a couple in the first round. I remember. Yes. Um, yes. Obviously, that program been. run by run by Boca Raton men's 15s coach Ale Hakim. Um, so he's speaking of Phoenix. They got a couple of former players. Um, named to the USA Women's World Cup side earlier this week, uh, whose names I can't remember off the top of my head and didn't. But they're not from Florida, but they do play. Yeah, they have played for Phoenix in the past. Um, what else we got going on, Charlie? In the summer, we 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 had the Sevens Rugby World Cup, as we mentioned last week. Obviously, I think the biggest name there for Florida is Cisco Lopez, who continues to make a massive name for himself on the rugby scene. Of, he, he gets a lot of screen time. I mean, listen, he's a handsome lad, Charlie. If the producers are smart, they get Cisco on the screen, even with his hair. And his, he's gone through some facial hair you know, things over the years. But uh, great to see Cisco out there at Rugby World Rugby Sevens Rugby World Cup sending Florida. Listen, I keep telling people, if you're young and fit and smart and you want to referee, this is where you can go. People will pay for you to go around the world and ref rugby, whether it's Dubai, whether it's South Africa, whether it's you know West Coast of USA, Vancouver. This is the, one of the best parts about being a referee. We also had a few. We also had a few Florida players on the World Cup. 
Chris Thomas. We did. We had Chris Thomas, who I'm not sure how much I'm not sure how much she's got left, Charlie. She's getting up there. We had her on, obviously, back in the day on the pod. Um, but she's not young anymore. She was she's still very good at sevens. She didn't make the World Cup's 15 squad. She was still playing 15s for USA a couple of years ago, but will not be at the World Cup. Obviously, Perry Baker, Malachi Esdale, former UCF and Naples, etc. Naples Bears, I should say, not Hammerheads. Got to, got to make that distinction before I get in trouble. Um, and yeah, no, good. To, not the best showing by USA on either side, but a bit of a down season, but it's been a weird year, right? Still, I know they've had a bunch of injuries and we'll see if they can get back. And then we had PR sevens. We had ran 12s, a lot of Florida representatives there. Uh, Morgan Freeman uh, was playing at PR sevens along with Christina Swift, former FAU. Uh, maybe played a bit for Fort Miami too. Uh, she was there, ran sevens. Morgan Brown from Fort Miami was playing for Jamaica. I know we had some girls um, from Tampa playing for U23 Souths in that tournament as well, um, including Sam Black, etc. So great to see Tampa continuing to churn out the women's talent as well as Fort Miami. Uh, yeah, it was a busy summer. Did you, did you get did you get out to much rugby other than my tournament, Charlie, and you know sitting on roofs, oh, etc., and getting me in trouble? Right. I went to all the tournaments. I never. What, what was your? Reason, I, I can't. I can't avoid them. <laughs> what else? Wasn't there one other? You did a couple of other things too, right? What? Say it again. Did you do, did you do some league stuff? Did you go up to Tampa for some? Oh league? yeah, yeah. I, I uh, apparently they love me in rugby league, and and now they're calling me every season to go and tape that nines tournament they have. At the beginning of June, I believe it is. I don't like to mention the L word on this podcast very often. Um, But I know League has a has a decent presence in the state of Florida. Traditionally, with the Jacksonville Axemen, obviously going back a couple of decades now. Uh, And now we've got the Copper. Is it the Copperheads and Copperheads and Tampa Mayhem? Florida seems seems to love rugby. Yes, the Mayhem as well. I. Listen, I played one game of rugby league in my life, and that would be the last game I ever I ever play <laughs> of that very silly sport. But well, it, it stop seems talking to about league if you play here in, in Florida. We're done. That's we it also, for the season. I'm never talking about it again. <laughs> we also have to talk about That's this true. guy. Yes, even if they spelled his name wrong. Zamaro Petanari, one of the – well, I don't want to call him a former Trident. I could still say he plays for the Tridents. No, no. He's, they had several members – several members uh, – He's gone off to play for uh I'm gonna call him 404. They seem to change their name every year. Oh, it's confusing. I'm still yeah, gonna call confusing. him the 404, which is the rugby ATL's developmental side. Um, and he was their man of the match in their first ARP, American rugby premiership. For those of you that don't know what ARP is, uh he was their man of the match in their first game last weekend, Charlie. Playing number ten, actually, not nine, which is his usual position. Nine is the position with the Tridents, but now the Tridents, I know, have had a good presence on the USA South side, and we've we've had a number of players. Is there was there a whistle in the background, Charlie? Is that you? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will you blow me for a penalty? Oh, that was that was our that was our timer. Our time's up. Yes. Oh, yes, there it is. Yes. The, the music. We're trying to. We're gonna keep try, I gotta go to work tonight. As always. So we're going to keep things yeah. rolling. So that's sort of a wrap up. I'm sure we missed things and people, and people that did stuff over the summer. But we'll try. If you if we forgot about you, please email us, post in the comments, and we'll obviously talk about you. Okay. Uh, the other thing we did have recently was uh, the Florida Rugby Union AGM. And we're going to get to the Florida Youth Rugby AGM later on, and what they had going on. But the FRU had their AGM. Was it last weekend? Right. Yes, yes, a week ago. All the weekends and, run together in my life, Charlie, as you know. I know. Um, but we've had we've had a obviously a major change at the top of the FRU. Yeah, let's um, let have, let's pre- just bring in president. our guest. Let's bring yes, the let's new bring president, Mr. Richard Comiskey. Hi, Richard. Is that hey, everybody? <laughs> Do we have to call him Richard now because he's president? Yeah, of course. Of I know. Course, I know him as Rick, Ricardo. No, no, he sent out a memo. <laughs> oh, he did. I, I must have missed that one. Yes. Sorry. Okay, yeah. uh, and we and we have also Evan Haig, Haig, sorry, 
Ever. Uh -oh. oh my god. Evan, what? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Brave man. Now, is, is there a good is there a good story behind this, Evan, or is this is not a good no, story? This is a terrible <laughs> story. This is what's called growing up as a ginger in Australia with uh no, that was own hole and skin cancer is getting cut out of your face at 40. Ah, I gotcha. Yeah, my dad just had something similar on his head. So that's a good story. That was glad, glad we're getting that taken care of because we, uh, in, it's yeah. no joke in Florida. I want to let that yeah, linger. So, so hopefully, a daily part of my ritual now from now on. Yes. Well, you could just tell people you got hit upside the head with a baseball bat, you know, protecting your family. And we'll believe that for now. We won't tell anybody, Heaven. Um, well, good to see you, Evan. I know you're back as, as the FRU general manager. Uh, well, let, let's, let's talk to you first, Evan, because I know you sort of moved your role slightly um, after the last season. But talk to us about your, your role here going forward in Florida. Yeah, my role stays the same with the FRU. Um, so as the general manager, running the admin side of those things, I had some changes in the family side of my life. So I had to I couldn't give full time to rugby admin, so I had to give up one of the two. And um, the FIU was a, a better match for what I wanted, kind of going forward. Um, and I think right. the FIU's positions itself really nicely with the FIU also with the new leadership here, and they're in really good shape too. So I, both of them were in great shape, in my opinion, going forward. And it just I had to had some, something had to give, and I ended up being the youth union to give. So I concentrated my time more on the adult union. And obviously, this is always a running joke with Charlie and I was back in the day. Other than you, we, we didn't really know who ran Florida Youth Rugby. And now we have a board in place. We have seven members now. Seven members, yeah. you know, seven members from around the state. Names that anybody involved with youth rugby in Florida will know. And we'll get to that later when we talk to Alan Lawson um, and uh, Aaron Church from Jacksonville. Uh, but Evan, where do you see the state of Florida rugby at the moment? And where can we improve on things here coming into 22-23? I'd say the biggest thing that I'm noticing for this year is numbers seem to be in good shape. So um, teams like Pelicans now have an A and a B side in moving up to D, um, D2 from D3 and then wanting to put a B side in into the, into the B side competition. And I think that just bodes well for where most of the teams are trying to travel and traject into high, higher amount of players and numbers with new teams coming into D4. So just to me, it looks like we're, we're traveling nicely uh, number wise in terms of the growth um, and we've rebounded nicely out of COVID because I think it was really a tough two years for, for everybody just to try to recruit people to come play rugby. And I'm seeing the sense yeah. that that's changed. And I'm seeing that personally on my own team that I coach. Um, our numbers have rebounded really nicely this year, which is great. That's obviously you're, yeah, you're, one of the most important things. Yeah, it's great to see. You. You're coaching UCF? Yep. Boys. Yep, UCF men. Mm-hmm. The, the the college scene seems to be like very uh, growing nicely because I've seen that UF and and uh, FSU they both have two full squads. Yep, yep. And we and we we didn't publicize it, but we ran a full full scrimmage, two full squads this weekend too. So, um, I would say, right. say most of the teams not very good. have have really done a really good job of trying to recruit. And I think that's been a lot driven um, by Kirk Swana. Um, he's having someone personally contact every one of the eight, uh, seven clubs that are in the kind of the D1 men's competition has really helped drive them forward and to want to be competitive. Uh, there's a lot of really good information out there for everybody to share amongst those. And, and what I mean by that is all the teams are sharing really nicely amongst each other to help them grow. And I think it's purely there's a lot more success, which I think long term will fuel more success um, on the men's program as those kind of players start filtering through wanting to continue to play rugby. Yeah, and we're seeing obviously FAU, I know close to me, coming back with a women's team again, which is great to see. How, yeah. how is the female side of things looking? Uh, I know we've well, got another girls team as well, girls program as well, sort of splitting yeah. off in the Wellington area. What can, what can you tell us about the female side of things? Because I know that's obviously been a a sore spot for Florida rugby over the last few years. Hundred oh, percent. I wouldn't even say it's a sore spot. I think it's a black, black eye on <laughs> on the sport of the whole in, in Florida. And, you know, I, mean, I used to coach a women's team, and I know how difficult it is. Um, but um, it's it's tough because Indian River have slipped away, but out of their ashes will come um, Treasure Coast. Um, 
and and they're, and they're more yeah, rebranding, but but they they won't be in the league this year um for the women there's yeah. just four teams in the senior women's the colleges we're working on kind of a hybrid type situation um it's tough on both sides so it's tough at the bottom when you can't don't have enough players to play and when you finally get enough you go play one of the bigger teams and you go get stomped by 70 or 80 points nobody wants that and on the counter side nobody wants to be in a situation where you're being forfeited to like Eckert and UCF constantly and not really getting enough games for when you go to regionals for them to be able to advance in any kind of yeah. pedigree or, or skill so it's this balancing act that Jesse and I are trying to work through on the college women's scale of how do we give them development but still get them enough game time and doing all of that. And, and, and honestly, at the college women's game, I think they're under-resourced. And, and, and it's not just money. It's, it's really, there's not enough coaches to go around there. So, um, and yeah. if you don't have enough coaches, you don't have enough people doing things, it just, it just becomes too difficult. And you end up with squads of, you know, 15, 16. That's what their SIP numbers were by the top teams. And their SIP numbers need to be really more in the 30s to 40 range, if not higher. For them to be successful so um that that would be my my take on the, the college game i think it's i think it's due to due to raise but you know it's really difficult to gauge where they're at in the fall because um, women's rugby in the fall generally is very quiet so um yeah in particular in florida so even though a lot of teams around the country play the fall we in florida particularly women's rugby they don't do a lot of fall development work um so I think it's uh, the feeling I'm getting. It's, it seems pretty confident. At least the senior women's, they're really working nicely together. They've been able to agree to a new schedule. Um, they've got kind of their, their, their setup of where they want to go. I think Tampa's rise in the last three to four years has been excellent for the for that because I think for the longest time it was just Orlando and um, Fort Miami going at it head and tongs. And I think it's good to see a lot more, yeah. much more balanced. Jacksonville's rebounded nicely with great numbers. So. With good structure will come good good play and you know numbers and so on but i think this is the area with the greatest amount of improvement is the women's game in general across the board and i think it's it's difficult because most people immediately we did it tonight was the first thing we talked about was men's rugby and i, and I think it's, it's tough for us to balance that out um for uh, for everybody within that so it, it's it's no easy task and i think both unions are grappling with how to manage that. It's it's not it's not it's not easy to deal with. No, for sure. As we mentioned at the top, you know, we've had so much women's talent come through here over the years, uh, perhaps even more than the men's on the national, especially mm -hmm. the 15s level. Um, so, well, we appreciate your time, Evan. Well, you could Evan, Evan, introduce our next man here. But before we get to this man this next to you here. Give it, talk to us about how you've how how you've worked with Rick over the years and and how he's going to help out here with Probably with the FRU as he's moved to president. When you came on as you came on right before COVID as the secretary, right, Rick? Yes. Yeah. So Rick was the secretary. Did a great job. Um, the greatest thing about Rick is um, Rick Rick has a vision and he has a drive to want to get things done. So um, and I think that's that's awesome for our union. I think. Kerry was an amazing president, um, and it's always going to be difficult to follow that. But I think Rick can handle that with ease. He's been sitting in and learning so much. Um, you know, there's not many people other than maybe Charlie that I've ever heard of that wants to sit and listen to a board meeting without actually being a board <laughs> member. And that kind of just shows you, and, and just shows you the mentality. Like board meetings are not not that they're unenjoyable, but they're not for that. For most people, it's just lots of chat, having to listen to Ian Henry babble on about all kinds of stuff. So, like, <laughs> you know, short of, short of that entertainment, I don't know what else. But you know, that's that. Rick is very, very attentive. Um, he tries to understand things. When he was um, uh, secretary, he he got to know everybody, um, and he that's just his role. And I think he's going to be great for that. It's a uh, it's a different. It'll be a different feel than Kerry, um, but I think it's going to be a really nice a nice good change and transition for us. Um, you know, I think Kerry's going to be still heavily involved from my, from what I can gather. I think it's, this has been not, it was nine years of work with Kerry and I think she did an outstanding job to get us pushing forward for where we're at. And she was ready. And I think, I think the union's ready as well to have Rick come on and run with it. And I think everyone's going to enjoy what they get out of Rick. Um, I think he's also going to be, um, 
cross dots and I's and cross crossing every T, you know, I'm sure he's going to redo the bylaws. He's going to work on a lot of those things to make sure that we're all in compliance with all of those things. And, and that may bug some teams when they have to do that. But I think that stuff is really important that we get right. And I, and I think Rick's going to be really good for that. Yes. So, um, yeah. Um, well, yeah, and good Rick, stuff. I'm looking forward think, to the, go ahead. Mr. President, yeah, Richard, we got to call him Richard now, apparently Evan. So Richard, but Evan, thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you and uh, obviously what your help you're going to do here with uh, with Rick's tra sorry Richard's transition and I'm sure Kerry will be good to help out with that as well so pre appreciate your time Evan we'll be obviously as the season gets cracking here yeah absolutely Richard thanks Evan Richard Ross. Comiskey um, give us a bit of your uh, give us a bit of your rugby background for those that that may not know um, who you are, because obviously those of us down here have seen you, you know, work with Miami uh, and then with uh, the union. Um, but some people may not know who you are, rugby wise and personal wise. So give us a little bit of Rick Comiskey history. Well, I met Ross on a sunny fall afternoon, um, two thousand. <laughs> Don't bring whatever. me into this. I'm talking about you here, Rick. <laughs> Too late. Uh, yeah, started rugby in high school for West End up in Northern Virginia, and uh, I was not good. Still, I'm not good. Um, played a little bit in college, and then um, I guess I've been a fan since, and uh, I'd suppose that I'm more of a fan than, than a veteran player or a good player or a coach, uh, although I do have the, the base level coaching certification. And All right. Yeah, been around for a few years down here uh, with Miami, and now I'm a manager for USA Rugby South. Um, just went to That's Columbia right. with them for the week, and we're setting up our next match in uh, November in Atlanta. And then trying oh, to organize Bro, for bring... December in Miami. Hmm? Uh, I know you were trying to bring back a wife from Columbia. How did that task go? <laughs> um... <laughs> She's she's we'll, we'll tell you right later. There. She's right there. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's you, you didn't tell me after the show, off the record. <laughs> so what what made you what made you wanted to get involved as the president here, Rick? Obviously, secretary is a very important responsibility as well. But you know, president and following in the steps of Kerry is a is a big task. What what made you want to? And what what do you, where do you think you could help at the FRU? Yeah, I guess uh, I'm. Administ I guess professionally, I do administration type work. I studied sports business in undergrad and grad school. And, it, you know, this was kind of my, my way to give back a little bit and then also kind of put my education to work because um, I don't work in sports where I make money. So, um, yes, you, you and I have had this discussion business. many times. <laughs> yes. Coming from our sports administration sports administration program and those of us that work to people that still some still work in sports but not everybody sure but yes no you definitely got the background there um but yeah what about yeah fru specifics how, how are we gonna what, what needs work here and where, where can you help out right um and i have to say given carrie's background we were so lucky to have her during covid and um i don't know that any really anybody else in the world was really better qualified to, to lead a, a rugby group um so wow um, my strengths, I guess, are more on the, the business side and being a fan that's perhaps not, um, as deeply ingratiated in a certain team. So perhaps I can, uh, see things from an outside perspective, but, uh, initially there's some, I guess, easy type business accounting sponsorship type things that I can work towards and hopefully get some some easy quick victories and then work on the bigger projects as the the term goes uh, what, what what do you see those bigger projects rick where, where does the fru need to improve and this is obviously something that you know you and i hear and charlie and i hear from many people out there that you know the union needs to do this better the union needs to do that better uh where, where do you think the, the big improvements need to come well um What's our union uh, mission and vision? And maybe maybe it exists and it's not communicated too well, or maybe it doesn't exist and it needs to be made. 
but I think once that's known and understood and shared, then people will be able to determine where we go and what we do. Yeah, I mean, Charlie and I always talked about, you know, that's how this pod kind of came to be is that we didn't feel that Florida rugby was sort of promoting itself well enough. Um, wh where are your thoughts on that and the, and the communication and marketing, et cetera, of how we can improve, you know, obviously sure. with Palm Beach winning the national championship, we've had, again, several individual players that have gone on to greater things, but I would think those of us that have traveled outside of Florida, um, Florida rugby still gets pooped on a little bit by certain people around the country and the world uh for whatever reason but uh where do you you know where, where, we, where can we improve on the communication market just how can we get florida rugby great again i hate to use that expression but yeah no, <laughs> don't. um that implies that we are currently not great and i don't have the <laughs> certain departments that's that, yeah. accurate you know i have to say <laughs> look at other unions websites Tell me a union who's got a better website. Tell me a union that's got a better summer program. I mean, if you pick your other union, how many sevens tournaments do they have in the summer? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's got, all sorts of ways to, to make it. Your... <laughs> um, I guess anything that we can do maybe administratively. I, maybe, I just mean, maybe, I just mean, maybe I just mean quality of rugby. Uh, you know, over from top to bottom. Yes, we've had national champions in UCF, Tampa, Palm Beach, New Fort Miami mm -hmm. have gone far as well as Tampa on the women's side. But, you know, as an overall state, as a state of, hey, how is the quality of rugby in Florida? And, and does, Charlie and I have talked about this previously too, the number of now social teams expanding to where it is, is, is that where Florida slots in? Is sort of, hey, it's a good fun place to play rugby, but don't expect to come down here and you know, then go to the next level. We've seen it in some, with some individuals and the, the occasional teams. But I think, again, as I said, on the, especially on the, the the nationals, 15s level, especially on the men's side, and not lately on the women's side, we haven't had the the, the national impact in Florida. Um, how can we improve the overall level of rugby in Florida? Um, <laughs> improve the administration. Put you on the spot. The yeah. Sure, go for it. And. <laughs> I'd like to get some national level events in our state. Um, yeah, we not? used to. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie will say we, we used to have tons of national championships up in Central Florida and Sanford. I remember yeah. ARing up there, and we haven't had that for you know years. I, I don't I, listen. I, I'm not behind the scenes, so I don't know why. Um, I can give you, but, I can but, give you that uh, answer. Anyway. Evan's got the answer. Yeah, go ahead. Evan. The answer is hurricanes and thunderstorms. <laughs> so USA and Rugby had a certain times of year, yes. About six years ago at a national championship for college where thunderstorms nearly destroyed the whole event. And so now that ever since then they've been fearful of coming to Florida, particularly Central Florida, for that because we have so many of those. So we have this stigma of that. We put a lot of over my eight years here, I probably put in eight or nine different requests for holding national championships yeah. at any one of different probably five or six different venues across the state and it's the same answer each time it's too hot too many thunderstorms so we've got to tell a different story and it's definitely something that we've worked on um, i think administratively with eric guy moving on from the national body um, will open more doors for us to have more opportunities for that so hopefully in the short term we might rick and i might be able to really turn that corner on us but that that's that was the stigma we had because we have the venues and the facilities and the desire to want to host them, we just never been able to get to agree to it. Let me just say, Rugger Fest would be a nice opportunity to have some quality game as we used to have in the past, because you know, no hurricanes in in February. Yeah, they, and, they do great. miss that. Our, our problem with those is that our best time to play rugby is you know January, February, March. That's when everybody feels most comfortable in Florida trying to play rugby and um that's the middle of our competitive season so when we talk about national championship events happening in may and june it means well for us to to put our best foot forward but we do we do try really hard the other thing about it is florida is a very popular destination for a, a ton of other sports to want to do national championships um so we have to be really forward planning to get get there at that and i think that's that's gonna it's, it's something that we're improving on and i think we will just make it even better because we're 
help us think this stuff through and we'll just push and push until we get the answers that we need. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, Charlie's alarm went off, but uh, as we're not going to have our special guest, Charlie, we can go on a little longer. Okay. I'll give you 10 more minutes. <laughs> we'll give, yeah, we'll give it till 10 we'll bring Alan in. Um, yeah, going back to the social thing, does, does the, is that a positive thing that social rugby is really blowing up here? Or is it, or do you see it as a negative thing or neither? Is it both a positive and a negative that social rugby, you know, the D4 level is really expanding? Um, but, you know, we've obviously back in the day tried to go D1, um, D2. You know, we haven't had a ton of recent success outside of the state. As Charlie's showing us the, yeah, as you can see now, D4 has just absolutely exploded. Um, why do you think that is? Evan can talk, Evan can talk about this too, but I'll let Rick go first and what he thinks if it's a positive or a negative that the you know, D four is exploding. Yeah, Ross, what's the difference between D four and social? Well, I mean, I see D four as more of a social level of rugby in that you know perhaps some teams you're not committing to. Uh, how do I? I mean. I don't want to say uh, two practices a week, right? Some teams may just have one practice, um, and some teams have gone down from D three to D four. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know why. Well, maybe Evan can ask the question of why D four exploded versus D three. Why he thinks that's the question? It, it's it took a while to get it there, but um, I think what it is is a great development area. So look at all those teams. Ninety percent of them were very new teams, apart from uh, Gainesville. Yeah. Um, Tallahassee would consider a new team. If you're just looking at those single club teams, um, and I think it's a really good environment for them to be competitive with each other um, and, and allow teams to rebuild and regrow. So I think Gainesville, um, you know, I know Kerry and I pushed, we pushed for them to go up back up to D3, but they felt like they needed one more year of D4 to just to re get their club back on, back on standing. And because of the flexibility of the rules within there, um it gave us a lot of that to do that one two uh, that's particularly when i do scheduling for d4 i regionalize it so we try to minimize their travel distances now some of them yeah it's, it's difficult you can't you can't not have tallahassee travel we're just always going to have to travel but we're going to try we don't make tallahassee go to south florida we try really hard not to have that happen and vice versa so we admitted we made a mistake last year and I think it was the semifinals when Okapi went to Tallahassee and when we should have sent Okapi to, I think, Daytona, um, who played Gainesville. So those were like things where in D4 we can really do that because it's all about just getting them as much game time as possible. Um, I think within D4, the second team, what we're calling the second division cup, is also starting to really get some good teeth. And I think it, it allows for a lot of crossover and flexibility of the way that we play. Um, I, whilst I think that, yes, you're, I agree that they're more social teams, a lot of these teams do practice twice a week. You know, I know Lakeland is pretty serious about what they try to do, and they're just developing as a club, and I think eventually they'd like to build out. Um, so I just think it's a really nice breeding ground for development. Um, but it wouldn't have been if there was only two clubs. Um, and it won't be if no, Okapi sure. doesn't get to play SoFlo and Wellington home and away. So I know you have Alan coming on later and he's got his hands full. He's going to have to make sure that he does his part down there with the new Wellington team to ensure that, you know, everybody gets enough game time. Because as soon as SoFlo and Wellington start saying they can't play, then that's that's when we're in trouble. And that's what the frailty of D4 is. And that's the frailty of the teams. So we've got to make sure that we can manage that effectively. Yeah, well, one good thing about having the teams down here is that there's other sides, say, for instance, Palm Beach or Boca or... Um, that don't have the numbers for a, for a D for a second side, but there's other sides. So if Palm Beach said, "Hey, you're never going to get time with those the A side," you know, go play for Wellington and somehow still be able to be associated with Palm Beach. I'm not sure if that's something we sort of thought about. That's, I know, that's, that's they don't go on So yeah, they don't go on anywhere after the, after this. So that's a, that's also something that's great down here is that we have the ability for guys to say, "Hey, go play if you want a match." You know, go play for Wellington. Exactly. So we have a what's called a guest player. Um, you're allowed up to five. Um, sometimes uh, I think Tallahassee doesn't. Any player from Florida State uh, doesn't count as a guest player for them. So that that allows okay. them to grab players who aren't getting enough game time for Florida State. Um, yeah, SoFlo and UM have the same type deal, basically where 
any player from UM who's not getting enough game time in UM's first team can get extra game time with SoFlo without getting as a guest player. And then outside of that, they can have up to five guest players from any club that they want. That, that and still makes the game That's count. Cool. So um, the whole idea is just we just want the game to happen no matter what. So if they, sh- you know, Wellington shows up with 10 players and, we try, and they get five players from three players from Fort Lauderdale, two from Boca, and one from Palm Beach. We got a game, and they can play, and that can count, and everybody wants the game to count. So that's that's the principle of when I designed it, or what we thought about, and when I talked to Ian about it a lot when we first really built this out. It was he was very much in support of making that type of stuff happen. Now, listen, the more people playing, the better. Rick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with this one, Rick, before we let you go, because um, this got me thinking. Seeing that Charlie putting up the divisions for next season, promotion, relegation. Where does the union currently stand on promotion relegation? I know there was some times where it was supposed to be forced and then it wasn't forced or enforced. Uh, and then it was sort of voluntary. And now I'm not sure where the union stands at the moment. And what are your thoughts on that, Rick, before we let you go? Yeah, I guess uh, Evan's more qualified to speak on the, the union's current stance. But I am for relegation and promotion. And I do hope to make some changes so that it's more uh better defined and hopefully compulsory <laughs> yeah i'm um, like with that all right so yeah, I, I can tell you how the rules work and they didn't hit the thresholds which we were very disappointed by um the thresholds were designed too highly so i think they well and truly due to be changed um i think there are teams sitting in divisions right now that are sandbagging so they can go win win things instead of playing where they where they're best suited to play for uh for the sport as a whole so those things are very important i get that i get titles are very important to everybody too so there's a balancing act with that and every club gets to decide where that is ultimately right now but personally um i stand with rick so things need to change i see you use the balancing act phrase a lot evan and i totally get it I, that, that that probably probably resumes what you have to do to get everything as a whole moving forward. Listen, guys, before you leave, I want to bring Alan in. He wanted to chat a little bit with you guys. So here he is, Alan Lawson, FYRU chairman. Hi, Alan. Howdy, howdy. Can you guys hear me okay? Hey, Alan. How are you? I don't, think I've, I don't think I've ever seen Rick without a hat on. I didn't know what his melon looked like without a, <laughs> a big old farm hat. So uh, I was a little bit shocked. Well, now you see That's, why. Yes. <laughs> and then I look at Evan. I'm like, did he get in fight with the kangaroo in Australia before uh, he, get, right. he got home? So uh, hopefully you're okay, Evan. I don't know much, if they talked about it before I got on. Much more serious. No, much more serious than that. Okay. No, it's just, it's just some skin cancer, Alan. You know, this oh. old, old Australian, Australian skin coming back to bite me. Yeah, you redheads in the sun, man. That's mm-hmm. not a, it's not a good combination. That's right. So yeah, I've been fortunate. <laughs> well, My dad's had Rick, that. Richard. Been fortunate to have it. Well, Richard and Evan, I'll let you guys get back to your Sunday evening. So I appreciate you joining us on this first episode of the season. I'm sure we'll be seeing you. I know Charlie and I would like to have you on, you know, at least once, once a month, once every other month, just to see how we're doing. Do I? I know Do the I? schedules out there. Not, not too many complaints about the schedules. I, I know we had a sort of a, a redo of some of them, um, but it's exciting stuff. We're just, you know, the season's just around the corner. We got tons of friendlies coming up the rest of this month, and good to get r- rugby going again in Florida. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for having me on. Best of yeah. luck, Richard, in your new position. Thank you very much, everybody. Good seeing you guys. Talk to you later this week, uh, Richard. Thank you very much. (laughs) See you, boys. I'm also going to bring in Aaron Church from FIYU. Hi, Aaron. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? How are you feeling, Aaron? I meant to call you this. I meant to call you this week. Feeling a little bit better? Uh, Over the yeah, over the hump, over the hump, getting better. Ready to get back into actually moving in action, right? Right on. Right. Well, now was it COVID or was it, or did you have, or was it just? Uh, yeah. Sick? Oh wow. No, it was COVID. It was COVID. I mean, I avoided it for what three years now, so <laughs> I guess I was due. Probably the last one in the country to ever get it. <laughs> yeah, I've had it three times, so I get it. <laughs> 
So I don't I don't know if I've had it. I thought I get sick I test I haven't been positive yet. So well welcome gentlemen. Alan, uh, we've had you on previously, but the FYRU we can sort of go over the changes, you know, since Evan stepped down uh, uh, you know as, as the GM of the FYRU and we finally have a board in place. Um, of people that actually live in Florida, which is great. Uh, so, Alan, give us give us a sort of update. Where, where uh, FYI are you? Where, how are we looking here? We, I know we've got a new team coming in the in the well up in your neck of the woods on the girls' side of things. Where are we looking at the boys' side of things? You know, Orlando. I'm hearing rumors here and there they might get their act together, which they really should be having a having a youth program there in, in one of the biggest cities in the state. Uh, give, give us a roundup, a sort of overall view, Alan, of how things are looking at the youth level. So we've got, um, I think Fort Lauderdale. I've got a, I got a finalized conversation with Toby uh, at the Fort Lauderdale, uh, and then I think uh, Charlie. We talked about the Miami side, uh, nice. and this looks like it's it may not happen, but they may have some kids that can trickle in and and play at some of the festivals. And then um, I have not finalized conversation for the U19s up in Orlando. Um, but the good news is, and I see that you have the shirt on, it looks like, um, you know, going back and forth with Simon on South Tech. So that's some exciting news, uh, that looks like they're, they're getting sipped, uh, with USA rugby and, and joining the union this year. So that's going to be fantastic. And then we'll just figure that part out. The biggest piece for them is, is the girls side. And, um, we're already trying to work with them to, to go up and, and with, uh, with them to do a kind of a camp slash uh, game day Saturday Sunday up in Jacksonville, so we're trying to trying to bring them in on that uh, to to get some excitement on the girls' side. So uh, at the high school level, so it's one of the big things that we're trying to do either mid December or early or mid January, and then do at least do it once or twice this year, uh, and try to and then try to figure out how we're going to get some games going. But I think the youth level right now, I think the biggest thing is right now we're really strong at the at the youth between, you know, we're getting more kids even at Wellington. The U6 is getting more involved or bigger numbers at the U6 on the way up. And then, you know, where we're struggling right now, I, it's interesting that's happened is there just seems to be a lot of distraction at the high school level. And I know we're going to be struggling this year. We have a lot of U16 players. You know, our U19s is one of the things, you know, right now I've got about 10 trying to push that up to, to you know last year we started with 35 so it's just one of these things that you know you're in constant recruiting constant motion and trying to make sure that you have the numbers to to make sure that you're successful in the coming season yeah where, where do you see the struggle why, why do you think there's a struggle at the boys high school and Aaron can jump in on this too I, I think um I think one of the things that's, that's happening good for us is that we're, we're tied in with the Wellington football uh, program and they want us to come in and talk, you know, get them in early. So come in and sit down and with the freshmen, certainly at the lineman level and linebacker level, because I think it just adds that extra value uh, to them. And I think, you know, in Florida, you know, let's be honest, everybody should be kind of a, if you're looking to go to the next level, you should be a two sport athlete. Um, every great, every great athlete is a two sport athlete, pretty much you can name. And rugby is just one of those sports that complements football so well, especially if you're a defensive player, uh, certainly on the, or an offensive lineman. And, and it's just one of those things that goes hand in hand. If you can get in at the freshman level and have, you know, camps and clinics and show how to tackle and get in with, with it, it, for us, it's Palm Beach Central, um, uh, Seminole Ridge, as well as Wellington. You know, we pull from all three of those schools, and all those kids are are awesome. And uh, we just we've just been very fortunate this year. It just seems that we've, we're going to have a little bit of some struggle. I know up here in uh, yeah. Jacks, we've got probably the most amount of schools in one city, um, with sixty two. Wow. schools total um and i've been like hard hitting the pavement on a lot of schools this year i had the biggest pre-signups that we've ever had um and i say pre-signups to see how many actually commit after um attending training and um right now i've had for high school kids 52 and that's across um uh, about 22 different schools um, but one of the things that I've noticed, even in talking to the kids, um, one is 
we're still not there where we need to be on rugby awareness outside of our rugby community. Um, it's like we're yelling loud in the room where all the rugby people are, but all the non-rugby people are still like, is there rugby here? I didn't know there was rugby. I've came across players that have played before and they didn't even know there was rugby in the area. And I'm like, they're juniors and seniors now. And they're like, yeah, I played rugby when I was a kid in South Africa. And I'm like, where you been? <laughs> you know? Um, and there's, I've talked to a couple of kids, didn't know we had it in the state. And I mean, we've been around and I know like we have these media outlets like this podcast where it's very big amongst the rugby community. But if they're not yeah. in rugby and they're not involved in our environment, they don't know it's actually happening. So we've got to find ways to really get our our awareness out there outside of just our community, outside our rooms. Um, I think we can get a bigger push um, out there on the girls' side, especially. Um, there's 300 plus girls that play flag football and go to a camp in Jacksonville. And I tell you, 90% of them don't know that there's a opportunity to play rugby. And it's like, we just gotta find ways to reach them. Yeah, we just gotta find ways to reach them. Yeah, Alan, hey, what money goes the by, plan the money to do? Goes to go ahead, sorry. Yeah, but what does the union plan to do to sort of help get the word out there amongst the youth athletes like Aaron said, you know, Aaron can go to a flag football camp himself, but he can't do everything. And you ha how, does, how does the union plan to help help teams help well, themselves and getting the word we out do there? Have, so I think that the rugby is here. So with, you know, again, I, I, we talk about forums, social media, and it's just continuing to, to, to pound and talk uh, for us. You know, we have Helen Archer, who is, we have a designated individual. She's very well connected all along the East Coast uh, with teams in Canada and with USA South. We have girls that go all over. Uh, you know, we just had, yeah. you know, and you get that out. We just we just had one of our girls just come back from, from Ireland for two weeks. Uh, and it, these are the type of things that people yeah. don't realize that that's available out there. There's more money that goes by the wayside that just doesn't ever get taken uh, for for women's sports in, in college just because they don't understand that the the awareness and and you know some of the things that we talk about with the wizards they tell parents I mean we have more scholarship money that goes out of this program really than than you know high schools combined because I have you know you get 10 kids that get offered a scholarship not all of them take it and uh, that money can go to another, you know, that go, could go to another player. It's just one of these things that there's a lot of opportunity because what these schools do today, they don't realize is that they essentially make it equal to in-school tuition. That's kind of what the math is, right? A $50,000 school, they get it so that the money's equal to what it would be to go to say FSU or, you know, University of Florida to, as opposed to an in-state school playing for a club, you actually go play for a D1 or a D2 school. And it's just something that people don't understand. And as you start to explain it and talk, it just, you can't quit. You can continue to be tireless in that effort. Um, and you try to develop these things that, to, you know, if, if we can do this, this camp and clinic and games up there in Jacksonville, South Tech can come, you know, we blow it up with social media, get the girls to put it on Instagram and just try to grow the sport. Um, and then uh, for us, we do it at the, at the, at the, really at the youth level. We have more, um, I think Bocas now doing it too as well. Um, we have more girls at the U10, U12 and U14 level than anybody. I mean, sometimes half the team is, is females. That brings it in and then it carries into, into high school. Um, and then it's just one of the, you just, you can't quit. You just got to continue, talk and try to deliver. I think it's one of those things with the girls that it seems to be word of mouth, right? Hey, one of them talks to their a couple of their friends. They know our athletes. Hey, why don't you try rugby? And obviously, a lot of part of it as well as educating the parents, especially of the girls, that this sport is not as dangerous as some people that aren't in the not in the know think think it is, right? I mean, Aaron, what what, what challenges do you see on the, on the Jacksonville side of things? I know how's the girls' situation up there at the moment. Um, honestly, I have more reluctance from boys' parents 
who don't want their football player to get hurt and lose the scholarship. Um, the girls usually the next time. <laughs> uh, on the girls side, um, we've had actually a really good response. Only only reluctance we get is usually from flag football coaches because um, high school girls flag football season the same time as the mm-hmm. rugby season. So they they uh, feel that we're competing. they feel we're competing. Um, so getting those coaches to understand we're not trying to compete. Um, that's that's our biggest obstacle with that. But as far as people worrying about injuries and stuff, it's usually from you know, the mothers of their sons, like, I don't want them to get hurt. I saw a rugby video and this big, you know, <laughs> Samoa guy just really cleaned the clock out of it. Yeah. And it didn't help. It doesn't help. But yeah, for the most part on the girl side, it's just really trying to get that um, awareness that we're not trying to compete with all these sports. Like Alan said, they should be multi-sport athletes, um, even on both sides, boys and girls. Uh, there's a lot of lacrosse girls that play um, that would switch over and play rugby as well. But we just got to get that through there um, that we're not trying to compete with other sports. We're actually trying to help. Yep. No, I, 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 I agree with, with what he's saying. And, you know, I think a lot of times too, and I, and I get this a lot on the high school level, you know, when you talk to a, to a lineman or a defensive player and you say, by the way, you get to run the ball, their eyes kind of light up, um, you know, yeah. what, no, I'm serious. And, and, and even on the, on the girls flag side, you know, let's be honest, there's only three or four girls that actually get to touch the, you know, they get to touch the ball. The rest are either linemen or what have you. So um, it, it's, it's, you know, you talk to them and you're like, look, you know, these girls are, you know, they're fast, they're strong and they're very powerful. And you're like, listen, you want to get an opportunity to play this other sport and you get to run the ball there. There's like, what, what do you mean you get, and you just kind of walk it through and you say, here's a YouTube video, you know, go to wizards on, on YouTube and, or go this and type this in. And, and it just, it just, you got to create that connection so that that mind spin. And so that when they actually look at it, I'm like, listen, I'm in. For sure. Well, before we let you guys go out and maybe just give us a sort of overview about some of the key areas in the sport that you as a board are really looking at for this upcoming 2023 season and then throw a few, you can maybe throw a few names out there some of the girls that are doing some great things outside of the state of florida at the moment i know we know some of them but you you, you certainly do as well with the likes of alex waltland and sarah Barsoom, etc yep yep alex is <laughs> i'll be honest with with alex waltland i i um and i even talked to my own my own son i've never seen a I've never been around a, a female athlete like that before in my life. I, I, it's, and, and I got to compare it to like, to be honest, she was like the Michael Jordan of, of girls rugby here for a long time. I mean, she's got to be, you know, one of the best in, in the you know world under 23. I and mean, she's just unbelievable. Um, she's a physical specimen. She's intelligent. She's smart. She's, she's athletic. And, and she just, uh, she's just unbelievable. Um, and her, you know, her, and she's just got an awesome family and even her sister who, who played at West Point, um, who, you know, who, who, who left our club and, and went to West Point. I mean, and, and then the other sister who, who played at, um, oh gosh, um, what's the Stetson University. I think she played Stetson for, for full ride for, for, uh, sorry guys, my, somebody's knocking at my door for full ride no for, uh, for soccer. That whole family just was unbelievable. Um, and then, like I said, we have uh, uh, Morgan, who, who plays for us. She, she went to Ireland this summer. There's these opportunities out there. If you show up, you can get them. And that's half the battle, just making sure that they show up and that they understand. Yeah, I think we, do, I think we need to do – I got a text from my dad. You know, need to promote the success stories even better, you know, on Facebook and say, look, this is – you know, I didn't know about Morgan going to Ireland, you know, I, Maybe I don't follow the right people, but it's one of those things that we need to get that word out. A couple of people share it, and then all it takes is that one, you know, one person to see it uh, and and take it to the next level. Um, She's, yeah. you know, so, some of these athletes are not, you know, it's, you know, and. and... <sighs> she's a, she's a very mature individual and she, she's not on social media a lot. And she, you know, she kind of, you know, there's those athletes that are out there that just kind of let, uh, that let their performance speak for them. And then what ends up happening though, is the people around them 
say, hey, this is what's going on, right? So you kind of got to get that that whole piece of it going. No, for sure. That's, I think any, any promotion is good. But as we said, what, what are some of the big things that the youth board will be looking at to work on this this upcoming season, Ellen? Some of the real focus So we're points. really pushing. We're trying to have, um, you know, we're trying, there's a couple of things. We're trying to really have a festival. You guys were talking about it before, getting back to this family environment. Um, we're trying to have uh, some more festivals this year at the youth level to where there's two or three up north two or three down south, just to make sure that everybody can play everybody on multiple times, get to that back to that environment that really, you know, that introduced me to the sport in 2014 and really what brought the Wizards along. And and um, that to me is is the ultimate, the best formula that you can have is everybody at a spot enjoying watching their kids play this this great sport. And it's something that we're really pushing towards. And what we'll talk about a lot at the AGM. The other thing I think that we need to do is, it, and, and all, it's just going through, and there are some rules I think that need to be reminded of, of, you know, getting back to, you know, code of conduct, how to treat referees, having, I think, um, as a board, I'm looking to, you know, develop an executive staff that can handle some things on day-to-day -day operations. Like, look, when things happen, you know, look, you're, you're going to be suspended. You're, you know, if, if you're, if you're going to cuss out a ref or cuss out a, a child on the field and, and you're a coach, I think, um, I think you need to, to sit back a week um, that, that this, these Good. type of things, we need to get back to better behavior. All of us, I'm not perfect either. So um, I think we all need to be better and challenge each other to be better um, to where, and you look at some of these things in youth sports today and it can be rather scary um, certainly last year with some of the football stuff and soccer stuff that was going on and even baseball. And I, you know, we do not want rugby to be, I mean, to be the worst thing ever. Um, if, if that happened, you know, with, with Florida youth rugby and it all of a sudden, you know, we, we were on TNN because of, of bad behavior with parents or, or with parents, players or, or coaches. So it's something that we really need to focus on because I think if you do that, you bring that environment into play, it's just going to attract attract more people, the right people that you want in the sport. Yeah, that's a, that's a big part about rugby is the culture, and they need to learn it as soon as they can. Uh, Aaron, yeah. I know you guys run that big invitational up up there in the in the spring. How's that looking? I know I'm sure you've already started planning and going to get bigger again this year. Yeah, yeah. Looking, we've already had a lot of teams from out of state talking about wanting to commit. Um, of course, okay. the Charlotte's teams are already signing up and ready to go. Um, a big change this year because we want to get more Florida participation. Um, we really okay. want to get more Florida teams. I know the Jaguars team will have a team, but anybody else that wants to submit a team, the Florida teams will be able to enter the tournament for free. So, I mean, oh, there's so really – there's no reason for Florida teams not to be in it, um, especially be able to compete on television and compete against teams outside of our state. It kind of gives us a bigger um, evaluation of where we're at compared to the rest of the country um, and actually gives us more exposure, gives the kids more exposure with colleges. Um, we have a lot more colleges that are committing to coming down this year than last year to scout out for, for more players. Um, so I think this is the biggest yeah. – last year was the biggest recruitment that um, Florida had for colleges coming down and pick, picking up a lot of players. And everybody's seeing that. So they're like, yeah, we want a piece of that pie too. So that Invitational is looking to be really big uh, with more participation coming across the nation. Awesome stuff. Well, gents, thanks. I appreciate coming on tonight and obviously continuing to do the ground level work at the youth level, which, you know, we need it. And I'm glad to see the board is doing good things. I know obviously it's a new sort of escapade for you guys and it sounds like it's been a relatively smooth process so far. Looking forward to seeing the progress on and off the field this season with the youth. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And Charlie, yeah, cheers, good job well, on the website, buddy. Sure.
Good job on that new website. I heard Rick give you the, the props. So there you oh, go. Yeah, thank you. We're <laughs> <Good> trying. <laughs> A lot of work. Right. Thanks, guys. Okay, yeah. guys. I'll right. see you around. Bye bye. All right. Okay, there go Good the stuff unions. There. We two I, two. I men, think it's yeah, it's it's, two, it's an important thing for for people to get to know who's, you know, up there because. I think most people don't even, they have no clue. You know, it's like magic. And this is a lot no, of work yeah. that these people have to put in, you know, week in, week out. Those meetings, as Evan said, which I, for some reason, attend as a spectator, that, that gives you, you know, a sense of, damn, this is not really fun, and but somebody has to do it, right? No, 100%. It, it all starts at the top, and the success will hopefully trickle down into the rest of rugby here in Florida. All right, let, let's take a look. I know you've been sort of flashing some graphics during the evening, Chai, but let's take a look at our divisions uh, confirmed for the upcoming season, and we can just talk about them real quick each for a few seconds. Yeah. So here is men's – oh, man, isn't, isn't this men's premiere, Charlie, not men's T2? Listen. <laughs> you know, uh, for some reason, Listen. I'm like old school. I always I always kept the two on, on, on my graphics. Because nobody outside the state will understand what the hell you're saying if you call them premier. Yeah. So um, the Pelicans, the big news here is the Pelicans moving up. Yeah. And obviously awesome. Fort Lauderdale coming back after one season in late in D4, Charlie, or? Yeah, one, one, one. And one. That, so we got two new teams uh, and nobody, nobody dropping out, right? No. And this is a very nice is a number to have. Eight teams, yeah, it's great. It is eight, eight teams is a great number. So as far as I know, they will play each other twice in their divisions, which will be Boca, Miami, Miami Tridents, and Fort Lauderdale will play each other twice, as well as and then Naples, Tampa, Pelicans, and Orlando will play each other twice in their division and then play the other division once each for a total of 10 games, which I, I like. I wish they'd start a little earlier, um, but what can you do about right. it? They're going to start early January. They're going to start a little earlier than normal, at least. It's going to be tough because they, they 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 basically don't have like any bye weeks other than uh, I think uh, Rugger Fest and it's like you know now wives and uh, wives and girlfriends are not going to be happy from January through March, Charlie. <laughs> well, it is. Really uh, I mean, there are some weather yeah. some teams that's going to be. Um, so that's D two men, and then we got D three men. Here, as you can see, Daytona back up from D4 to D3 after their last couple of successful seasons. So five teams there in D3. Uh, I haven't looked at the schedule, Charlie. Are they playing each other home and away? They're playing each other home and away, yes. There's obviously Palm Beach defending D3 national champions. And then I assume the top two will play, or is it, is it top two or top four of the playoffs? Again, I haven't looked at the schedule. Uh, first versus second. One so versus just one two versus two for the championship. Team. Yeah, I like that. All right, so that's men's you know, D three. I think, I think that eventually we may be able to, you know, from that D four division, maybe in a year or two, you know, we have another three teams, and we have eight teams here, which would be awesome. Yes, All hopefully right. we can get there soon. Uh, what's next? Oh, sorry. That's all right. I mean, if you want to finish there. <laughs> Men's D4, which is exploded now with the small colleges, now that there isn't really a small college competition exclusively in Florida. So you see Eckerd UM, who are back in the mix, I think. Uh, Ave Maria and St. Thomas, the new program. We'll see what they managed to put out. There were some scholarships to hand out, Charlie. Uh, then, yeah, you've got the, we'll then you've got the nine four sides, including Treasure Coast returning from the dead as a team, which is great to see. They were a superb program. Back in the day, um, Tallahassee, even though Charlie missed an E on the end there, Carl and Gainesville in the north, and then Wellington, oh. Wellington, another new side. We forgot to ask, we forgot to ask, right? Uh, Alan about the Wellington program. Oh, um, yeah, great well, it's gonna be team. Tight. Yeah, jumping in there, and then there's the B side cup as well. So, a lot, a lot of teams in D4, a lot of games, which is great to see. Whether we'll have enough refs for them is another thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you. 
And Especially up north. The um, there's your FCC. And no changes there. The seven Same teams, as, year, as always, yeah. playing. And then the, the semis and the final. Obviously, Florida State, you're defending champions there. This who are defending D4 champions, Charlie? I'm sorry? Charlie, who are defending... Who are defending D4 champions? Do you remember? Oh, it was uh, Gainesville won last year. That's right. We had them on at the end of the season. Do you remember that? Uh, so that's your FCC men. Uh, there's your D2 won. women. have sort of faded away. So still with just the four teams again this year. And they'll have semis and final temper. Likely to be the favorites to win that one again. For Miami and Orlando. Should be in the mix though. Jacksonville with some work to do. Mm-hmm. Did I spell it right? Tampa, 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 Tampa. 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 You got everybody's name spelled wrong. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. And listen, I have this. And this, and this college this. women. Um, what? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, that, that that's a hard one to keep track of until they get sorted out because. I know FAU are just trying to get back. That's why they're not going to have a team this season, but hopefully next season, or maybe they'll be able to go. Play some friendlies in the spring. We shall see. All right. Well, we survived one, Charlie. We 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 we're gonna, we're gonna show to... one quick clip that Charlie sent me earlier, <laughs> which was a, a great trick try, which I'm surprised nobody's ever thought of before. Somebody's definitely gonna yeah. try it now that we show this. Okay, let's in Florida this season. As you can see, the red team with a line out close to the white team's line. The white team's sort of gathering there, expecting. Oh, sorry, a penalty. The red team ex just expected the kick to touch. You see watch this guy in the middle here. He's drifting over to the right. They go and kick that's to touch. Instead, he just chips it to him, and that's <laughs> the easiest try. He'll ever score. White team certainly not paying attention, a little too lax the days of call, expecting there to be a line out, and instead they were down five points and marching behind the posts. You know, that is one there. thing that, that, From that I – from my days playing back in you know in the old days it just seemed like back then we would do more like weird stuff or crazy stuff and, and nowadays everything yeah. is so like rigid okay you have a penalty you just kick it out that's it that's all you do you know yeah imagination has, has come out of the game a little bit especially because what you see at the top level now you don't see any of that so perhaps that's why exactly yeah unless it's a barbarian game uh, yes, those are the most, <laughs> those are the most fun. <coughs> so, right, anyway, before we leave, I just want to show uh, this is my crew watching the, the podcast. There's Valentina and the rest of the family. Your daughter, yes. Right there, look, looking looking on at, your, at yep. his, her famous dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you're famous and not, as as you're famous and not infamous, even if it's in the small rugby community. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, so yes, Ross, we got this one. I'm looking forward to have the next ones for a few weeks. We survive. We're going to try and have it as many Sundays as we obviously during the season. We'll try and have it every Sunday uh, until then. You know, maybe every few weeks as things happen, as the friendly start trickling um, news elsewhere. Um, obviously, the Florida Youth AGM coming up. I forgot to ask Alan the date for that, but maybe we'll get some. News out of that. We've got the women's World Cup coming up oh, soon, yeah. which will which will be on Peacock, which is great. Yeah, I I got a reminder that we didn't mention in the summer that we had this really awesome camp with all these Pumas, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the gold, met, you know, the the Olympians. That was a very awesome. nice camp, a, yes. a two day camp in, in in Western, and we got these guys. Uh, coming over that was a very nice experience i i it's the one that is in this little intro that you're going to see right now before we yes anytime we can bring in international level of the game here and get people together um get it improving their games great yeah more camps the better man as, as alan said i love tournaments listen i grew up playing mini rugby in England, and that's all we played was tournaments. We're going to this place for a tournament this weekend. Then we, there weren't individual matches till we were, you know, a lot older, 14, 15, 16. So uh, great stuff. Looking forward to a great youth season this year. Oh, yeah. All right, Charlie. We're we'll back soon. Thanks for your work as always. Thanks for everybody who tuned in and showed up tonight for our return to T-Firm. We'll, uh, we'll see you down the road here in a few weeks. 
Okay, you need to improve your connection, I think. You need to work on that. It's been a little I bit know. Spot. Yeah. I'm hard, if hard not, wire it next week. If now I'm gonna bring <laughs> in the 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 B the B plan host. I've got my have my have my hundred foot <laughs> cable here that I will plug in. Okay. Or Good. I drill a hole. It's a pencil, so I'm not sure I want to do that. Hey, thank you, Ross. Well, I'll see you around. See you next week. Yep, see you, boss. Bye-bye.